Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Welcome, friends. Today's guest is a woman of immense talent. After being discovered working in an Arizona coffee shop, she took on Hollywood and broke into every avenue of the entertainment industry. Actress, director, producer, writer, and philanthropist Sherry Rigby is most well known for her work in films like October Baby, Overcomer, Not Today, and her autobiography, Beautifully Flawed. Also for her work as the founder of a women's organization, The Women in My World. She is a friend of mine and someone I highly admire. And I'm thrilled to welcome you, Sherry, to the set today. Thanks for being here. Hi, Brenda. Thank you for having me. Well, I think uh, I would love for our guests uh, or for our viewers today to really be able to see inside of your world. You talk about the women in your world and uh, people see you on the big screen, but they really don't probably often know the heart that's behind some of these films, uh, some of the thing, the projects that you have written, things that you've uh, directed. And so I would really love for you to share with us a little bit about your journey and how God really, it, it, this these opportunities have come to you. And that's what I love about this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something you necessarily pursued in the beginning, but God brought open doors to you and, and really walked you through a, your own healing journey in the process. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. I think it's one of my favorite things to talk about because I love when God says he can do all things through us and we apart from him can do nothing. And I think that's really um, a part of my story is that God really has been at the center of the entire thing. I always tell people he's the greatest agent that you can have. And when you, when you really understand and trust in the Lord and his plan for your life and open your hands up, he can take you to incredible places that you never imagined. And for me, that really started with, I, I was hopeful for a whole house full of babies. Uh, my husband mm -hmm. and I had our last child, Levi. And so we were really excited about more children and as we were uh, going through this journey of kiddos, we had helped to open a coffee shop in our church called Hebrews back at Calvary in Phoenix, Arizona. And um, we were really excited. I mean, Hebrews, I know it's such a fun name. It's like everybody's <laughs> always like, yeah, that's a great name. Uh, and so I was just ready for the next baby after Levi. He was our youngest mm -hmm. and didn't have another child, couldn't have another child actually. And so as I was working through this whole process with the Lord, a man came in with his family, sat down and I literally was serving him coffee. And he looked up at me and he, he said, have you ever thought about doing commercials? And that really was the introduction to what God was about to do. And so I always think about that moment because it really could have been a moment in my life where I said no and didn't go to an audition. I had no idea what I was mm -hmm. doing. So I really had a choice and it was laid out before me. And so I went to that audition and I had no idea what I was doing. And uh, God did though, but I stepped out in faith. And the next thing I knew, I ended up getting that that job. And before I knew it, I was working in multiple commercials and national campaigns and small films that were coming through Phoenix, Arizona at the time. And before I knew it, God was taking me into the next part of my, my life. And that was really going to Hollywood eventually in 2009. Wow. And it's really interesting to me how God would take you into an industry where that's full of rejection mm -hmm. to actually do an inner work for you that would uh, be a part of your career uh, progression. So mm -hmm. take us into that uh, place, Sherry, where um, the Lord began to do some healing in you. And it even related to your first, uh, uh, to one of your movies, October Baby, and, mm -hmm. and how God, I, I know that there was a particular scene in that movie that, you know, the presence of, of the Lord is everywhere. And, and, and uh, I love how the Lord was ministering to you during a particular scene and uh, what he's done mm -hmm. in, in terms of inner healing and identity as a work in your life. 
Absolutely. Well, and I and I love how the Lord does that, right? Because we we mm -hmm. we so often get consumed by the what are we going to do, and He's really in the middle of it, going, "Let me let me show you what I'm going to do," and yeah. uh, and so that's really been a part of my entire journey, Brenda. Is that when the Lord took me to Hollywood, I immediately thought, "I'm going to go and I'm going to be a huge movie star," and God literally has answered many of those prayers for me and put yeah. me in places yeah. he's desired. But what he began to do was really, um, he began to work in me internally to know that he was going to do something with my life and my ministry. And so again, with mm -hmm. October Baby, what you were just sharing about, my first feature film that really launched me into the faith world was with the Irwin Brothers. And it was called October Baby. And it was a movie about a young woman who discovers that she has been, uh, she was adopted and because of the adoption or she was in a, a child that had um, survived abortion. And so she finds mm -hmm. out that she was adopted and then goes on a journey to find her biological mother. And that in the movie mm -hmm. was me. And so uh, the really beautiful thing about that particular movie, though, is I remember when the Irwins gave me uh, the script and they said, we want to share with you a movie. It was also their first feature film as well. And um, wow. they said, you know, we want you to read it. And if you like this character, please let us know. And so there's multiple things to that story. But I remember reading that just weeping by the time I was at page 10 because I couldn't believe that I was reading about an abortion survivor. And then I literally got to about the halfway point in the movie, which we call an arc in the movie. And I didn't really see the character that they were talking about. I couldn't really figure out who they were wanting me to play. And then all of a sudden, as I turned the page, the nurse started talking about a woman who worked at a law firm, uh, who that was then that in that moment, what I realized was that here I was reading something that actually paralleled my life and had been written for me 20 years in advance. I, when I went through my abortion, I was working as a paralegal for one of the largest law firms in the state of Arizona. I was working in corporate law. Um, same thing with, you know, my husband that, you know, in the movie, it shows me going and sharing with him what I had done and him opening his arms and showing me the love of Christ. But the significant, I really believe one of the most significant pieces of that movie is when uh, the young woman leaves me a note in my office and it says, I've forgiven you. And you know, as an actress, you prepare uh, for so many of these moments, but I wasn't prepared at all for this because really, truly what happened next was the Lord literally met me in this moment. And I'll never forget that um, I was sitting on his lap, literally, and he was holding me and saying, you know, you've been forgiven. It is done. It mm -hmm. is over. And I just remember sitting there thinking about this movie and about what God was doing. And that was 2010 and walking through this very intimate healing process with the Lord. And, uh, and then 2012, the Lord took me on a speaking, you know, ministry to share about mm -hmm. being post-abortive. I was a teenage mom, so many things in my life that I got to pour into other women. And, you know, and here it was again for me saying yes to a movie role that would expose wow. something that happened in my life. So Wow. Yeah. So powerful. So powerful. And you know, it's what's so beautiful. And what I love about you, Sherry, is that you carry that vulnerability uh, into those opportunities. And that to me is being the light of Christ, because people want to see our brokenness and our relatability. They want to see our humanity. Uh, they're not interested so much in the polished image of who we are, but in the real person. And uh, tell us, how has that segued into a ministry for you in Hollywood and with young women? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think people do want to see your vulnerability. They want to see transparency and authentic, uh, you know, just someone they can sit down and go, wow, you know, this person really has experienced what I've gone through or they can yeah. in some way, shape or form, they can understand. But when I went to Hollywood in 2009, you know, Brenda, I was, this was before even making October baby. And 
I remember sitting in that little classroom, you know, with John Kirby going through this, you know, acting and, and, you know, trying to understand what it meant to be an actor in, in Hollywood. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was ready to quit. I just didn't know what oh. I was doing at that point. I, you know, and, sure. and so the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want you to start a women. I want you to bring women into your home and I want you to praise my name first, first, and then I want you to pray. And so uh, I started doing that. And that's where the women in my world was birthed and, and literally started with two women and went from two to 25 almost overnight. We were meeting on a regular basis every Tuesday, really mm -hmm. focusing on identity and who's we are and who we are in Christ, our identity. And I love how God, I mean, my last movie that I just directed was called Identity Crisis because that's what we all seem to kind of be going through until we understand yes. who we are, right? And Amen. that- it just trans, it just continued to grow. So the women in my world is really a ministry where I focus on helping to mentor and disciple young women in entertainment uh, and media. And we're really trying to hone in on creating um, leadership, Christ, Christ at the core for women in leadership. And the other part of my ministry has been when after October baby, the Lord took me on a speaking tour. In fact, I just got done on another speaking tour again, but I've been speaking now to women um, all over the country since 2012, sharing my story and really sharing about what God has done through my life and how he continues to keep using me. And, you know, life isn't always yeah. easy. We go through seasons, but no. man, when he's got a plan, just get ready for the ride. It's wonderful. And I know that you're really equipping women uh, to be able to carry that light into um, a very pagan culture, really. Um, Hollywood is such a mix of people and uh, stories. And, you know, it's often taken a lot of criticism from the Christian, Christian community. Uh, mm -hmm. And I suppose that would be because so much of the focus there is um, you know, not uh, not exactly aligned with the the principles of Christ, but there are strong believers who are working in Hollywood that I know personally, you know personally, uh, such as yourself. And I'd love for you to speak to that and the importance of praying for Christian actors, Christians who are coming into meetings and being the light of Christ in a world where people don't go to church necessarily. They don't have a community. Uh, how important is that? And how important is it for us to support um, good production of Christian films? Yeah, so many great points there, Brenda. I think it's really important as Christians to get in and start, well, first and foremost, praying. You know, we need to be prayer mm -hmm. warriors to move mountains, and uh, we need to take back that mountain of entertainment. It is important, you know, today in today's culture, the first thing that most people go on to is their phone or they're streaming something that they're watching, right. and that really does dictate a lot of what they do with making decisions day in and day out, how they view themselves. Um, how they view a culture. And so mm. we need to be those warriors, not only praying for them and also supporting the projects that come out, but we need to be putting pl people in places that can be really light in a dark place, that we can be mm. shining bright and making content that really does reflect our views and, and really reflects the light of Christ. And so we work really hard through the women in my world to not necessarily, we don't want to work within the scope of mandates to put women in places. We want to actually create education and resources and put women uh, who are leaders, Christ following leaders in places and positions to make decisions to really equip them in a way to wow. work in entertainment, whether it's behind a camera or in front of a camera. We need those leaders and wow. influences in these places on a regular basis so that we do have a culture that can turn and look at those influencers that are really walking out Christ-like values. And so the women in my world is really working hard to do that. And we've been able to do that on my last movie and we're getting ready to go into another one where we'll be doing it again. Oh, very good. I love that. So tell us how you stay grounded in, you know, you're very multifaceted and multi-talented. How do you stay grounded and, uh, and balanced in your world? Um, give us some of those tips of even how maybe the Lord, you know, calls to your attention. Do, you know, does he speak to you uh, when it's when things are getting too crazy? Uh, how does he ground you? And, and what are some of the principles and disciplines that you've, uh, 
you know, enforced in your own life that, ha- that help you to stay in a, in a balanced place? Absolutely. Such a great question. I, my first and foremost is the Lord. He reminds me really quickly if I'm not spending enough time with him, you know, our phones tell us how much time we've spent on our phone every week. And I can only imagine if the Lord was constantly doing that to us. And I know he, he gives us little nudges to say, you're not in my word enough. Mm. Let me Mm. show you, let me, you know, and so I really do focus on trying to be balanced. I think mentally, physically, and spiritually is really important. Um, Um, My day starts with my devotional time with the Lord um, and a great cup of coffee and him and I just, you know, spending time together. Uh, I know the Lord comes first and in my life and all the things that I do, I want, uh, as Alex Kendrick always says, he wants to be on God ideas, not just good ideas. And I really believe in that as well. Um, Mm -hmm. My marriage is second. I put my husband, Mm -hmm. you know, Christ first, marriage second, my children third, and everything after that comes. Uh, And I think the one thing that the Lord always reminds me of is when I start veering a little bit away from where he's called me to is he says, don't forget my women. And when I, and I, when I'm focused on the Lord's women and really walking in that call on my life, you, it's amazing to see what God is doing. So I would tell everybody who's listening, and watching to make sure that they stay connected to the Lord. It's the best place to be first thing in the morning so that you can start your day on the right path. Our, yeah. our marriage is definitely our second priority under Christ and our relationship with Jesus. So our, our next one is our marriage, really staying focused on, on our marriage and loving one another the best and as well as we possibly can. And third, our children, and then everything else after that. And we do it to the best of our ability and we do it the way Christ has called us to do it. Not the way that the world has called us, but the way Christ has called us. And that's how I try to stay in balance. Mm, so good. And you do have a, a beautiful book out called Consider the Lilies mm-hmm. and a devotional with that book uh, a, a, that really speaks to these things. Let's expound on this idea of resting in him. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things too, a little side note here that I, I thought was so beautiful is that you have said that when women come to you saying, I don't know what my purpose is and they're just, you know, they're in a frenzy about it. You say, listen, you're purpose is Jesus. And so, you know, this is the whole point is that when we learn to come to into his presence first, Mm -hmm. that's where we get, you know, uh, that's where we become whole. That's Mm -hmm. where we get wisdom. That's where we're, we get guidance. And it's really about the daily process of purpose, isn't it? So can you speak to that? Because we live in, in a, an era where, you know, it has been said that the, the rising tide of depression and anxiety is global. Mm-hmm. And people are just wired with fear. And um, we're seeing so much with mental health issues and it's affecting everyone. I would love for you to speak to this area where we find our peace and we find our purpose. Absolutely. And I love that. I think we need to talk more about that, really, especially as Christ followers. You know, the Lord, um, the Lord and his through his word tells us exactly where our eyes should be. And that's on him. The world has dictated something differently. The world has sold us a narrative for many years uh, that it's all about us, that we need to be the ones to put our focus on ourselves. We need to, we can, we can manifest our own things. Come on. And the truth of the matter is, is that's where we're finding this um, crazy situation that we're living in today in today's culture with depression, anxiety, fear, frustration. We take those from the world, not from the father God. And so mm-hmm. what I always say to women who call me up and are talking to me about this, you know, cause they, we all go through seasons of life, whether it's marriages, whether, you know, I've got women, who have a marriage has come to an end and and they're devastated or their children go off to college or a a job has changed for them, something in life that's happened. And all of a sudden they say, I've lost my purpose. 
And I have to go back to them and say, because that's what the world has said, right? If something happens or it doesn't go quite right the way we see it, we lose our purpose. And I always have to go back to him and say, you know what? The Lord created you with the purpose for him first and foremost. It says in his word, we are to go out and create disciples. We are to go mm-hmm. out and glorify the kingdom of, of the Lord. And so he doesn't say to go add a bunch of titles to your name and try to figure out how to be the top of the food chain or get your, you know, Mm -hmm. your, uh, title at your next job. He goes out and says, make disciples. And, Mm -hmm. and so what I see in women do at the moment I say that, as I said, you, this is freedom. He says for it is freedom, right? Like I see women all of a sudden, when I say that to him, it's all of a sudden they're sitting there like this. And the next thing you know, they just kind of like relax their shoulders. And all of a sudden you just see this peace that comes over them. That's power. And that's what we need to be reminded of. And there's a difference between pursuing the kind of power that's me first and the kind of power that Jesus gives us to overcome really ourselves. And, you know, we can't Mm -hmm. give away what we have not received. And so that's so good and so wise to be able to help people just to relax in the grace of God, understanding he Mm -hmm. is the author and the finisher of our faith. And he walks us through these things, even our failures. It's really in our pain. Wouldn't you say, Sherry, that we discover the beauty of Christ and and the authenticity of who we are. We don't get there um, the way we often want to, but it's through the painful journey. And uh, I I just so much appreciate uh, what it is that you're bringing to the table and the light that you shine uh, for the glory of God. Uh, Is there any kind of encouragement that you'd like to give in the last two minutes to those who are frustrated right now, those who feel their dreams have been dashed? Uh, Give some encouragements to our viewers today. Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, I would always say to them, seek, seek the kingdom first, seek Jesus first. And I know sometimes it feels like it's a broken record, but really that's truth. And when you seek him, you will be able to, to withstand and go through all things. I think also perspective, take a step back and no matter where you feel like you're on the, the top of the peak or in the bottom of the valley, like look at the perspective, you know, we, we are called to have joy through all things. And so sometimes Mm. in the culture we live in today, our perspective is skewed because of the world. So we have to get our eyes back on Christ and really know the perspective that the Lord, what it is that he's doing. Um, And I just say, man, lean into him, get into the word of God, praise him and be prayerful about all things that you're doing and know that he has a purpose and a plan for you. Our Lord is faithful and his provision is great. And so as long as we are walking in that truth day in and day out, we will see the hand of God in our lives. And, um, I think the last thing I would say is let's keep our eyes on Christ, not on the world, start serving others through everything that God has done through you and, 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 and pouring into others instead of, you know, looking at how we can take care of ourselves. Let's start pouring into others and serve others. Amen. Thank you so much, Sherry, for being with us today. And lastly, Sherry, give us an idea of what you're working on right now and what we can be expecting from you. Absolutely. Well, recently I just directed a feature film called Identity Crisis. It's a teen girl movie and uh, hoping that that'll be coming out here soon in the next couple months. So keep keep posted on that. Um, and then also I have a new movie we're going into pre-production on. It's a Pure Flix original called Golden Influencer. And so we are getting ready to uh, shoot that here in Georgia in 2023 and uh, really excited. So lots going on. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sherry, for being with us today. Love you, friend. Love you too. Thank you. And friends, we're so glad that you joined us in this conversation. And I know that you were encouraged. So continue to be the light of Jesus in the world that you live in, knowing that he is with you each step of the way. Come again next time. I'm Brenda Crouch.